Hi, good evening, everyone. Thank you for joining us for the BCIT Computing and IT Information Session. We have a number of panelists who will be here to talk about all the different computing programs that BCIT has to offer. And I'll start us off, and then you'll hear from um, our other panelists. We're going to be going through our programs at a fairly high level and fairly quickly. Um, this is meant to give you an idea of all the different breadth of programs at BCIT uh, related to computing. So we won't be getting into details. Um, and that hopefully, it'll just give you an idea that you can research a little bit later. So for our Zoom webinar format, you may have already noticed you have a Q&A box at the bottom. We'd like you to use that for all your questions. Feel free to type questions throughout the session. We have some very fast behind the scenes typers who will be answering your questions. Um, and hopefully at the end, we'll also have time to take a few questions. When you do ask questions, please um, include a lot of detail, especially about which program you're asking about. Because as I said, we're going to be going through a lot of different programs here. So if you were to say, um, you know, when is the application deadline, we wouldn't know which program you are asking about. So feel free to include lots of details in your questions. Um, as you may see, if you are on Zoom, you should also have a Q&A box. Now I'd like to introduce our Associate Dean, Mike Starkey, and he'll take you through the next few slides. Great, thanks Donna. Um, so as Donna mentioned, we have a number of uh, panelists uh, here tonight to talk to you about our programs. Uh, uh, myself and, uh, and Donna will be back to present uh, some of the programs as well. We have Kevin Kudahy, David McKay, Malcolm Ferrier, and Marco Vichik, who will talk to you uh, tonight. There are also a lot of panelists in the background answering those, uh, the questions that you asked through Q&A. So uh, we have a number of people here uh, to um, provide you uh, the presentation, as well as information on any questions that you have. Next slide. So the BC tech industry really is growing. And if you've seen some of the recent announcements in terms of some of the companies that are expanding here, moving to BC, uh, you can really tell this is becoming a, a hotbed of, uh, of, of, uh, of uh, technology uh, here in BC. Next slide. And in fact, it's growing much more than other industries. And you, know, you can tell that if you hear about the airline industry or, uh, or tourism in general, manufacturing, um, any of these other industries are having challenges during this time, whereas high tech is actually uh, in quite good shape. If you think about the technology we're using tonight even to have this meeting with all of us video conferencing into uh, to hear about the sessions here, these are the kinds of technologies that are now taking off to allow people to study and work remotely. And there's other uh, areas where technology is being applied as well. So technology is actually doing much better uh, than many of the other uh, industries um, uh, that, that are uh, uh, in this environment. So next, next chart, please. And it's not just technology companies that are using technology. A lot of companies use technology to differentiate themselves. Um, so if you think of, uh, uh, of, well, of what you do on your, on your phone today in terms of applications, that a lot of that is working with other companies that use technology to sell their services, whether it's retail, whether manufacturing, financial services, um, all of these companies use technology as well. There are the, the, uh, the mainline technology companies as well. And we have in BC, we have large multinational companies, we have medium-sized companies, and we also have startups, and many of them uh, started by BCIT grads. Um, so there really is robust uh, growth and there are worker shortages because of this expansion, because of the uh, number of, of tech jobs uh, in BC. And it really is dynamic and fast paced. There are a number of very interesting challenges that people are solving right now, um, partially because of the environment we're in, um, but also just the advancement of, of using technology in, in various companies. Um, and it can be very creative and rewarding. So if you look at some of the challenges and you uh, then work to solve those, you get a lot of satisfaction out of solving some of these uh, key problems. And one of the ways that we actually stay up with what's happening uh, in the industry is we have, uh, we have um, uh, advisory uh, committees, we have uh, program advisory committees of uh, leaders from the local industry that help us and advise us on our curriculum so that we can ensure that we stay current with what's needed in, uh, in BC. And, uh, and ensure that there are uh, jobs and opportunities for the students that come through our various programs. Uh, next slide. 
So I don't know how many of you uh, know about BCIT, but just to give you sort of a brief summary, we have nearly 50,000 students across five campuses, and we're one of BC's largest post-secondary institutes. Uh, we have the most extensive computing and IT course selection in Western Canada, and we have this opportunity to actually move from one, um, one credential to another. So some students come for a diploma, they then might go out to work and come back and do a degree. Some start with a diploma and then decide, well, hey, they really like this and they want to do more, so they might continue to a degree program. Uh, you'll hear also about some of our PTS courses where people start with some of those and then become interested in some of our diploma and degree programs. So we really like to have flexibility where you don't necessarily commit to a four-year program when you, when you enter, but you have options to learn as you go uh, and be able to have a very dynamic uh, um, set of credentials as you progress through BCIT. Um, and, and we really do focus on real world, pro world pro, uh, projects. So a number of our programs, we actually get projects from local companies that we have our students work on to give them connections and insight into what's happening in local industry, real experience, working on real problems, and also learning how to work with, with clients and, uh, and people in the industry as well as on complex problems. So uh, we really do, uh, do, do focus on real world experience and real world projects for our students. Next slide, please. So the way we kind of uh, organize or think about our programs is, is these three areas. So create is where you're developing something from scratch. So it's creating something new. Maybe it's a new website. Maybe it's a new application. Uh, maybe it's a new system. But essentially creating something where there's typically a, a, a challenge to solve and you're creating a solution for that. We also have programs around configuration. So creating solutions by, for example, taking an application, deploying it on a fast network, putting it in the cloud, bringing all that together to, and then managing it to ensure that that, uh, that, that solution is configured to execute uh, uh, reliably and, uh, um, and, uh, and sustainably. And then we have command. There are a lot of tools that are uh, out there uh, that are used by companies to transform their business to run more digitally. And so we have a number of uh, courses that can teach you not just the basics of those, of those applications, but actually how to become an expert and really utilize them to, to do your jobs. So those are the, the three, uh, three areas that, um, that we're going to organize as we go through uh, the various programs uh, t tonight. So uh, maybe Donna, I can get you to continue with Create. Okay, next slide please. Uh, right, so let's start with our kind of create category. So this is where we would be training and teaching you um, how to, from scratch, develop a system, website, web app, uh, mobile app, you know, basically writing code to create something from scratch. Next slide, please. So let's start with CST, which is near and dear to my heart um, because I'm the program head of CST. Okay. So computer systems technology. Um, we have a full-time two-year diploma, and students who finish that diploma can apply um, optionally into our CST Bachelor of Technology. So you would first get your diploma, and then you could go off into the working world, or you could continue for two more years of full-time to get your Bachelor of Technology in CST. So here we're kind of creating your typical or, or um, all-around software developer. So if you were to graduate, your job title could be something like software developer, application programmer, um, software tester. Um, in the CST diploma program, you will learn multiple programming languages, um, including for mobile and web. Um, but we, we try to have more of an all around rounded software developer. Um, right, so that's a two year, two year diploma full time, which can go into two more years for the Bachelor of Technology. All right, uh, next slide, please. So here's another two-year full-time diploma. This one is focused on web development. So the diploma is fairly new. It's called Full Stack Web Developer. Um, you will also be learning multiple programming languages, but they will all be ones that are focused on web and web technologies. So when we say full stack, um, we're talking about a lot to do with the front end and the back end behind the scenes. The full stack web development diploma includes a lot of projects, some of which are interdisciplinary, a uh, little bit of math, a little bit of communications. 
And so your typical job title, if you graduate with this diploma, would be web developer, full stack web developer, and you would also be able to do the jobs of a front end or back end web developer. Um, so we'll be graduating our very first group of full stack web dev um, diploma students uh, at the end of this academic year. Like I said, it's fairly new to respond to all the demand that's in industry. Okay, next slide, please. So now we'll get a little bit um, at, on our fast track program, still in the create sector. So this is um, software systems developer. And it's a certificate. Um, and it's more, like I said, it's more fast track. Um, it's fairly quick. It's still full time, though. And this one is meant to augment some skills, especially in the back end. Right. This might be for someone who is switching careers and already has some front-end development skills um, and maybe wants to learn new skills. Right. So um, it is still full stack, but it won't go as in-depth as the diploma. Right. And um, again, typical titles could be full stack web dev or web developer or programmer. Um, oh, and in the SSD, you will also get a, a small introduction to mobile development, but it won't go um, very strongly into the mobile development. All right, next slide, please. So a little bit of a shorter certificate. Here's our front-end web developer um, credential. So as the name implies, um, we're not dealing in with the back end here, with the behind the scenes. We're dealing more with the front end. So this is when you were to visit a web page. Um, this is what you see. That's what the front end web developers do. So typical titles could be web developer. Uh, more likely, it would be front end web developer or web designer, or even there, there's a WordPress developer. So this is, again, perhaps for someone who is looking to add a skill who might already have a credential but wants to add that skill or switch careers. Um, so it's a pretty quick but comprehensive way um, to learn all you need to know about the front end of web development or web app development as well. So those are um, the programs that I'll be talking about. And I'm going to now hand it over to Marco to talk about even more programs. Thanks so much, Donna. <clears throat> Um, the electrical and computer engineering technology program really involves the design and development of new and electrical computer applications. This two-year diploma program has a common first year and students learn that, that foundation of information. And in the second year, they are specializing in one of three options. Automation and instrumentation is uh, where you would involve, be involved in the design, application and support uh, electronic and computer-based uh, automation systems. Um, you'd interface and in network computers and electronic equipment to pneumatic, hydraulic, mechanical, and process systems. Careers and career opportunities include things like working in a design office, specifying, designing, and programming automated measurement and control systems, providing technical support, uh, management of installations and buildings, automation, and industrial systems, and even technical sales, and working in a lab environment supporting uh, the research and development of new products and systems. Electrical power and industrial control is just that. It's the technology used in utility, industrial, commercial, and residential applications. Um, this includes power generation, both renewable and conventional power, as well um, as industrial electrical systems and power conversion systems for renewable energy resources such as wind and solar. Um, career options or opportunities include the designing and programming and maintaining of industrial control systems, uh, field testing commission and troubleshooting, technical sales and developing cutting edge prototypes for research and development. Finally, we do have a telecommunications and networks area where the students learn the principles required and have careers in designing, developing, manufacturing, and testing of telecommunication systems and networks. Um, really, a few of the areas that you would study in this, and, and the, the name sort of says it itself, you're working on wireless networks, internet uh, engineering technology, land mobile radio systems, 
digital data transmissions, fiber optic, satellite communications, radio frequencies, and local and wide area networks. If this is one of the programs that you would like to revisit, we are hosting a program information session on October the 22nd. You can see that on the slide there. It will be at 5.30. It is titled under the information session of electrical en engineering, where we will review the, this technology as, pro as well as provide information on the degree program. Please register for that session. Next slide. Mechatronics and robotics, uh, what an exciting and uh, interdisciplinary field. This uh, particular program, it's integrating uh, technology from mechanical, electrical engineering, as well as software engineering. Um, and it's using it to design, modify, and maintain complex systems, uh, such as computer integrated manufacturing equipment, robots, and embedded systems. Um, you'd be able to design intelligent, reliable, versatile electromechanical systems. It, it's used in such things as industrial robots, medical devices, simulators, automated assembly lines, etc. Um, you might be designing and building uh, automated equipment for the movie industry, for example, and it really is, like I said, an exciting interdisciplinary field. I do want to note that this is a competitive entry model. So the better your entrance requirements marks are, the better the opportunity to get into this program. If it is one of the programs you are interested in revisiting, we will be hosting a program information session on Wednesday, October the 21st. Uh, please register for that session and we'll be able to send you more information. Next slide. That concluded our create section. And now we'll be moving on to the configure area where where we produce solutions by using modified and integrating systems and applications. Next slide, please. Our industrial network cybersecurity program is, is one of the newest programs at BCIT. Uh, we really developed it with demand of specialized graduates in mind. Uh, we're currently in our second intake and are expecting our first graduating class of this two-year diploma program in June of 2021. Um, companies on an industrial level, they have a, a, where you have manufacturing and large industrial plants, uh, the operational technology that they use has embedded hardware and operating systems and ethernet-based networking interfaces, like a link to your internet, uh, that makes them susceptible to the same types of electronic attacks that we could even have on our home computers. Um, the program really takes the students on a comprehensive study of industrial measures and control technologies, computer information technologies, and networking, industrial networking, and industrial network cybersecurity. The graduates really come out of this with um, uh, being multifaceted to understand all aspects of the system being used and defending those systems from electronic attacks. Um, you might be working in an environment where you're designing, analyzing, configuring, or providing technical services involving the application of industrial networks. This is one of the programs that you're looking to revisit. We'll be hosting a program information session on Wednesday, October the 14th. Please do register for that information session. Next slide, please. Finally, in my section of configure, and I will pass it off to the next speaker after that, but um, is the Computer Information Systems Administration Program. Uh, I'm, I know I've even seen a question about it already. It is a, a very popular program. It is um, an information technology infrastructure solution rather than computer engineering or software development. It really provides skills focused on maintaining networks and the network infrastructure and client support. It's, it's technical training rather than design and engineering. The first year introduces students to computer hardware, operating systems, network infrastructures, and cybersecurity. And the second year specializes in deploying and supporting the network infrastructure used in today's systems, enterprise systems. Some of the industries that um, some of those industry-leading systems that the students are educated to work in 
uh, work with and systems that you may have heard of are Cisco Systems, Microsoft, Fortinet, Juniper, Palo Alto, Red Hat, Oracle, VMware. Um, and sources of employment and opportunities for careers really could be with internet service providers, government and municipalities, hospitals, management companies, airports, and many, many small businesses. Again, if you're interested in revisiting this program, we are hosting an information session on Wednesday, October the 14th, and please do register for that session. I'm going to pass it back to, I'm sorry, I'm not sure. Me. <laughs> Thanks, Marco. <laughs> Thanks, Mike. <laughs> yeah, sure, no problem. All right, so let me tell you a little bit about uh, CIT, Computer uh, Information Technology. Um, so in this program, we, we teach students uh, to, uh, to perform IT systems-related work. Uh, so this could be uh, integration, making systems uh, work with each other, talk to each other. It could be maintenance, so applying fixes and adding functions to, uh, to existing systems. Could be testing, documenting. There, there can also be some development. So some of the development work may be inside a company to help it uh, run better and help people use the systems better. There can be analysis around the applications and the, uh, and the uh, resources that, uh, that the uh, computing systems are, are using. Um, it also gets into uh, areas like deploying in the cloud um, and maintaining and managing systems that may be partially deployed on-prem, partially in the cloud, and, and deciding you know, how to do that split, for example. And then also um, um, optimizing how applications for a company are actually deployed and how resources are used to ensure that, uh, that they are uh, reliable, scalable, and also meet uh, security standards. So some of the typical kinds of jobs that our grads get are uh, user support for supporting uh, users inside a company, uh, systems integrator, network administrator, um, and really all supporting their own colleagues inside a company to ensure that they have the best computing resources available. Uh, we have an info session uh, next week, October 13th. And if you're interested in this program, I urge you to uh, register and attend that uh, info session. So next page, please. The uh, Technology Support Professional is a 10-month certificate, so this is an accelerated program, um, and this is to uh, train um, graduates to be able to work in a multi-platform environment, so they learn about uh, different kinds of systems um, to be able to work in IT shops. Uh, they would typically provide uh, tech support, help desk, or uh, be uh, junior network administrators. Um, some of the things that they might do would be to respond to help requests from staff members or clients, uh, they might be installing and configuring new systems and hardware, uh, report, re running reports on systems and hardware uh, status to understand how well the systems are running, and then uh, replacing mal malfunctioning or damaged uh, hardware and, uh, and uh, troubleshooting software. So a number of different uh, uh, activities in uh, typical data centers. Um, and uh, as I said, that's a 10-month a certificate to, to train to, to do that. Um, next slide, please. And the, uh, sorry, next, next slide. Okay, uh, and we have a, another program in geographic information systems. So this is where, uh, if you're not familiar with this, is this is where uh, geospatial data is taken into account with, for example, maps. Um, so things like understanding uh, resources, the weather, even geographic aspects of epidemics, natural disasters. So being able to apply those um, to maps to understand and analyze what's happening in the world, and even predict in some cases what uh, what events might might happen. Uh, so this is certainly working with some of the GIS systems that are available, but also there's a programming aspect where uh, graduates would, uh, for example, design user interfaces in Python, Java, design websites around some of the GIS systems to be able to uh, to use them to to analyze and in the uh, to su support some of the solutions that they're building. So some of the typical graduate jobs here would be a GIS analyst, a data specialist, certainly consultant, um, and also remote sensing and GIS technician, and maybe working in certain industries like forestry, natural resource exploration, or consulting companies like uh, environmental companies, engineering companies, um, or government agencies. Um, so that's uh, the geographic information systems uh, program. And Malcolm, I'll hand over to you. Thanks, Mike. Uh, I'd like to thank everyone for coming today. Uh, my name is Malcolm Ferrier. I'm the program head of the Bitman program. 
which is a two-year full-time diploma in the School of Business, uh, and it creates business IT analysts that are the um, bridge between business and technology. So the first year focuses on MBA-type topics. Then the second year uses that business foundation to learn business technology, things like business intelligence, management of information systems, cloud application development, ERP systems. And the second year has recently been split into two options, enterprise systems management and artificial intelligence management, which is uh, brand new and we're very happy with that one. Uh, There's just a couple of uh, caveats. This is a really intense program, so you want to make sure that this is something you want to do. Uh, The program has also been filling, so if you're interested, please apply as soon as possible. Uh, There's an info session November 12th, and I'd like to thank you all for listening, and I'll introduce um, Dave McKay, who's going to be talking about digital forensics and cybersecurity. Great. Thank you. Uh, I'm David McKay. I'm the program head of the Forensic Science and Technology Department. And I just wanted to talk a little bit about forensics. Um, It's not quite what you see on TV, but it's still a very uh, interesting and rewarding career. Um, There's always a a growing need for good uh, digital forensic investigators. So if you have an interest in trying to determine how, how something happened, like a network attack, uh, or who did it, like a crime, um, the Digital Forensics and Cybersecurity Program may be for you. Um, we offer an advanced certificate and a Bachelor of Technology in Digital Forensics. And there are many different jobs uh, within the world of di- Digital Forensics and Cybersecurity. Um, it could be from a Digital Forensic Examiner who examines evidence contained on items like cell, cell phones, computers, and un- other electronic devices. Uh, to a cybersecurity analyst uh, working for Amazon to prevent and investigate unauthorized network attacks. Um, our program is part-time, so courses, of, of course, when we're back to in-class, uh, happen at night and on the weekend, so you can still work a regular job and get an education. Uh, we do also have an option of a full-time day school uh, format for the Bachelor of Technology in Digital Forensics and Cybersecurity. Um, in order to apply to our Advanced Certificate or Bachelor of Technology program, uh, you do need to have uh, two years of post-secondary or 60 credits, um, something based in IT or computing, um, as we don't have a direct entry from high school. Uh, so if, if this is some, a program that you're interested in, uh, we will be hosting a more, what we'll call, detailed uh, in, info session on October 15th uh, from 6 to 8 p.m. And I'm going to provide a link in the chat sh- shortly um, on how you can sign up for that uh, info session. Uh, next slide, please. So I guess the following programs are geared towards mastering the latest in, we'll say, digital software and applications. Uh, Next slide, please. And uh, also within the forensics department, we offer an advanced certificate and Bachelor of Technology in Crime and Intelligence Analysis. So in these programs, our students learn how to conduct investigations using tools and techniques, uh, including analysis, crime mapping, and statistical software. And A lot of our graduates are employed in crime, intelligence, and security sectors, uh, often doing high-level criminal intelligence work. Uh, Again, in order to apply for this certificate or Bachelor of Technology program, um, you do need to have completed at least 60 credits of post-secondary. So basically, for the two programs I've just described, um, most of our students work in law enforcement, forensics labs, uh, different provincial investigation agencies, insurance companies, uh, and other large uh, corporations. Uh, so again, if this program is of interest to you, um, we've got another info session coming up on October 16th, uh, where we're going to dive into what crime and intelligence analysis is, what the program is all about and career opportunities that are out there. So again, thanks for listening. Uh, I'll be in chat to answer any questions that you might have about these uh, programs. And I think Mike's up next to discuss uh, the technical writing program. Yep, thanks, David. 
So how many times have you uh, read something about technology and you think, I understand the words, but I just don't get the concept that they're describing? So that's what technical writers do. They take that technical content and they write it in such a way that us mere mortals can actually understand. Very important uh, uh, career uh, and very important as technology becomes much more advanced and much more complicated to help people really understand the value of that technology and what the benefits are to them. And so, um, so what the uh, technical writers uh, typically do is they uh, create documentation. So that could be for products, it could be for services. Um, also now, because a lot of documentation is published on the web, they also get into uh, editing web content, um, writing and editing that to ensure that uh, it's well written and understandable. Um, and of course, training and, and online help, um, because those are also uh, key, uh, imp- key for, uh, for people to use technology um, and so they write a lot of that, uh, that kind of material to make sure, again, that people understand how to use technology uh, and can get help as they're, as they're using it. So this is a part-time certificate, um, and there is an info session uh, uh, next week, uh, October 15th, if you're interested in this uh, career. Next slide, please. The next one is uh, OAT, Office Administrator and uh, with Technology Program. So this really focuses on using business applications uh, to um, to support business operations. So uh, you know a lot of the Microsoft products, for example, and products from other companies, uh, they they are used in a lot of companies now um, to automate and to uh, facilitate uh, people's uh, people's workdays. And this course doesn't just focus on the sort of the high level of of using these these uh, applications. It gets into understanding some of the detailed ways that they can really help you do your job and help people uh, help people do their jobs. So get into some of the detailed aspects of using some of these tools. So it's a five month certificate. Um, it's uh, in depth. Um, it's five days a week um, because there is a lot to learn in these applications, uh, and you come out of it being able to be a receptionist or a coordinator, perhaps an accounting clerk or administrative uh, assistant, assistants and. Part of it is teaching uh, technology, but also how to use the technology in business. So there are some business topics in terms of how to use the technology for, uh, or these these applications, for example, in accounting and in certain environments, not just abstract uh, um, uh, ways to to use the product. So uh, really how you can be efficient in these, with these tools in an office environment. Um, so I'm going to uh, hand over to uh, to Kevin now to talk to you about uh, part-time studies. Thanks, Mike. There's a variety of uh, credentials you can earn part-time that are subsets of the diploma. Um, we've got different sectors, including all of the software development, web and mobile, database, business intelligence and analytics, as well as application training, uh, networking, and agile development. These are all available part-time, and there's a series of credentials that you can earn with as little as five or seven courses in each topic area. The software development also includes um, a path to the diploma, the computer systems technology CST diploma entirely part-time. And uh, we also have several web and mobile different development credentials. So part-time studies in, is mostly nights and weekends. There are a few during the day. You don't have to sign up for an entire program at once. You can start with one course. You only pay for each course as you register for it. And we've got over 500 different courses delivered every year, laddered into 15 different programs. So uh, we're having a full part-time studies computing information session on October 22nd. And I can better explain all the details there. As I said, part-time, you can parallel the CST diploma, part of the CIT diploma. Uh, We have a different set of courses that are web-related. And part-time, you can also ladder towards the degree. So if you want to learn more about part-time studies, uh, please feel free to sign up for our info session on October 22nd. And if you want to ask me some questions in chat, I'll try to answer those now. So uh, everything starts with one course. What's the next slide? Is that mine as well? No. Prerequisites. Um, 
the assumption is in part-time studies is that you've got grade 12 English and math for the majority of the courses because BCIT is post-secondary. And uh, I think that was the um, sort of the quick overview of computing part-time studies. Great. Thanks, Kevin. So that actually concludes our quick overview of all of these different programs that are in computing. Um, so I've seen a lot of the questions. A lot of you already know um, which program you might be targeting. But maybe some of you came here to get that general idea. And now you're going to go off and investigate and uh, read a little bit more about each one and the courses and see which one's right for you. So once you decide on a program, um, you'll look at the entry requirements. And perhaps you don't have the course correct prerequisites to be able to enter that program, or maybe you've taken the course, but your grade isn't high enough um, to enter the program. So we can also help with that. And there's a pretty easy link there to remember. It's bcit.ca slash upgrading. So you can take the course to achieve the prerequisite or to upgrade your grade um, to help you be more competitive for some of those competitive programs. So um, check out that link if you like for upgrading. You've heard a lot about additional info sessions, and you've heard a lot about all these different programs. Um, you're asking great questions, but where can you actually see all this information later so that you can have a chance to absorb the information and do some research? We've tried to put it all together in one easy link for you, which you can see at the bottom there. It's bcit.ca slash experience. So at that link, um, you can see all the other info sessions and register for them. Um, you can connect with our program advising team and make an appointment with an advisor to talk more in depth about some of these programs. You can learn more about the admission for the different programs and, again, for upgrading. So to your starting point to get more information and to start your investigation would be that link there at the bottom. Right, I think this is our last slide. So um, you have been using the Q&A already, uh, but now is the time where... Um, if you have not gotten your question answer yet, perhaps it kind of got lost in the thread, feel free to ask it again. Or maybe um, you asked your question, but you didn't include um, which specific program you were talking about. So feel free to ask it again with a lot of detail so that we know which one you're talking about. And I'm going to go now to the Q&A box. Actually, I was making a few notes um, as we were going along. And one thing, some things I forgot to mention was that in the CST diploma program, there are different specialties or options. There are different options for September and January. So if you look on our website, you can see those. And I saw that someone had asked about games and game development. So games is one of the BTEC specializations. So if you're interested in creating video games, um, you should first get your CST diploma and then enter our CST BTEC and then you can join the games development um, specialization. And I saw something else about internships. So I'll mention the programs I know for sure that have co-op are the CST and the CIT diplomas. They each have a eight month co-op placement. Um, and if any of the other panelists know of their programs that include co-op or internships, um, feel free to shout out here. I do want to throw out that the electrical and computer engineering Technology does have a co-op option as well, yes. Great, okay. Um, I know that for the CST and CIT, um, we don't have as many co-op placement opportunities as we do students. So again, once you were to enter the program, you would be applying for co-op and depending on the grades that you got in the program, it would be a competitive entry for co-op. Yeah, so if you get into the co-op program, then you will have a co-op coordinator who will walk you through um, and tell you exactly how many jobs you have to apply for each month and arrange the interviews and all of that. So there's three programs at least that have co-op options, um, optional co-op, I should say. You don't need to be in co-op. You say you want to just finish your two years and get out there and get a job. Um, you can do that as well. I see a lot of questions about um, grades and... Um, Minimum grades, right? So all of our websites will definitely list the prerequisites to enter and the minimum grades required. But of course, for some of the more competitive programs, um, effectively, 
the average for entry will raise depending on how many people apply and for depending on the grades that those people have. Right? So for example, for CST, the, our minimum average um, is 67 to be able to apply, but effectively it, for the past few terms, it's been more to, in the mid to high 80s because of how many people are applying for it. And I see a lot of questions about, do I have an advantage if I apply early um, versus if I wait for the deadline? And that one will depend on the program. You've heard a lot of the other panelists tell you, um, this fills up fast, so apply early. Um, and then for some other programs, it actually doesn't matter if you apply early because some other programs will wait until after the deadline has passed before they evaluate the applicants. Um, so that one is program specific, and I can't give you a general answer for that one. I try to call out some of the, I've seen this question at least twice, so I'm gonna call this one out. What's the difference between CST and CIT? So they are both full-time two-year diploma programs. The difference is that we categorize CST under more of the create, where you are definitely learning um, various programming languages in order to write programs to create websites or applications um, or apps and things like that. So CST, think of it as your all-around software developer writing code. And CIT, um, we, we put that under our configure section. So you will learn some programming languages, but it will be more for the purpose of, of integrating different pieces together um, and configuring things and deploying things and making sure things are backed up properly. So you'll be more working with lots of different pieces of technology and integrating them together, perhaps using code um, in order to help a business run. Um, that is in general kind of the difference between CST and CIT. Um, when is the deadline for BTEC for game development? Um, so the, the deadline or the way to apply for BTEC is that once you're qualified, once you have a CST diploma, or if, or if you, in some other way you've met the entry requirements, um, that one would be a more of a first come, first serve um, program. So, for example, for our September intake, um, we were taking applicants until we filled our two sets. And I think they filled sometime early summer, but we don't have a specific deadline for that one. Um, right. I see a question about, I've already answered a question about the average mark for CST. How should we evaluate our undergraduate or postgraduate degree um, and submit it to BCIT? Uh, it depends on which program you want to enter. Um, so for example, if you wanted to enter the BTEC program, you would contact um, the BTEC program with your other credentials and the program itself would do a pre-entry requirement for you and tell you if you were eligible to apply or if you needed to take some bridging courses. Um, what resources are there for networking or other help to find jobs post-graduation? Actually, for all programs, um, the BCIT Student Association in general has um, career specialists and the career specialists are available in all different fields. And there is one who is specific to computing and she, and this applies to alumni also. So even after you've graduated and you are looking for a job, you can um, arrange one-on-one -on -one sessions with the career specialists. They will help you um, improve your resume. They will do mock interviews with you. Um, they will give you tips and tricks. And in addition, BCIT itself, um, I think it's, it's either this week or next week. Um, we put on a career week where uh, we have companies come in and do recruiting and do coffee talk sessions and panels. And um, there is a job board that industry can post jobs on that BCIT students can access. So there's a lot of help um, while you're still in school and plus when you're an alumni to help you get out there and find a great job. To get into BTEC video games, the, the most common and smoothest path is to do the CST diploma and then go right into the CST BTEC. There are other paths into BTEC. So example, if you have a different, uh, a, a different credential from a different post-secondary 
we can evaluate that um, and see if you have the courses that we want you to have to be able to enter the BTEC. So the CST diploma is not the only path into BTEC, into the CST BTEC, but it is the, um, the smoothest and most common one. I'm, I tend to um, pick and choose the questions that, of course, I know the answers to. So I'm trying. I don't mean to focus too much on CST. If any other panelists are seeing um, the same question pop up again and again, and you want to answer it um, verbally right now, feel free to interrupt me. What types of companies does BCIT do co-op with? Um, all types. Um, very very small um, startup entrepreneurial companies, all the way up to very large worldwide, um, you know, giant companies. Um, our, our co-op office, our Center for, uh, Center for Workplace Education, um, has a lot of contacts in industry, and we have a lot of people who post on that job board, um, plus the BCIT Student Association job board. Um, class sizes. I can answer this probably for almost everyone here on the panel. Um, BCIT uh, is very proud of our cohort system. So when you enter almost any program, you'll be placed in a cohort of 25 other students. And as a cohort, you'll take all of your courses together and have all the same classes. Um, sometimes for a lecture, you may be combined with other cohorts, but for the most part, for all your labs and all your applied learning, um, you'll be in a small group of 25. And um, you'll travel with your cohort through most of your program. So you'll, you know, you'll make some really good friends, um, future contacts in industry, and you'll form study groups. You'll start carpooling together. Um, so for the most part, your, your labs definitely will have a max of 25. And your lectures could be longer, or sorry, could be larger class size. Um, let's see, what other ones can I answer? I'll just keep going if no one interrupts me. <laughs> uh, what are some advantages of getting the BTEC compared to the CST diploma? Um, from, right from you graduate, there may not be as much of a difference. You may be competing for the same type of jobs, but maybe after... I don't know, say three to five years in the industry, as you begin to begin to move up in your company, um, depending on the company, some of them will put more store into your actual credential. Right? Or sometimes you'll see um, on job descriptions, some job descriptions may say minimum bachelor required. Um, so it depends on the company and how much, um, how, how important they believe the bachelor level credential is. Right? that's where the value will come in. Probably not right away after graduation, but later on in your career. And I'll mention that the CST BTEC, the Bachelor of Technology, also has a very large uh, part-time studies group. Right? So a lot of CST diploma students will graduate and begin working and then continue to work towards their bachelors in part-time studies. We have more PTS bachelor students than we do full-time bachelor students. Um, for the CSTB tech. Thank you, you're welcome. Thank you for joining us. Let's see, um, what kind of jobs would I get if I took game development after a two year diploma of CST? Uh, let's see, I guess I would, add, I would assume that you mean if you go into the B tech into games. Um, oh, sorry, I see a note here. I should start. Wrapping up this live portion. Oh, wait. So we're going to um, wrap up the live portion. But people, panelists will still be here answering questions in that Q&A box. But I'm going to wrap up my talking. And thank you very much for attending. I'll again direct you to the bcit.ca slash experience. That's your starting point to get more information on any of this, plus to register for all of the future info sessions that you heard about. All right. So once again, thank you. Thank you to the panelists. Thank you to all the attendees. Um, our faces will disappear now and we'll try to keep answering questions in the background and uh, leave a little bit of break before the next session. <laughs>